In this video, we'll install an internal hard drive. In the next video, we'll get it set up on Windows 8.1. First, here are some basic supplies and tools we'll need. Note that you may not need the power cable in your installation. I will not need it in mine because I already have a power cable available in my case. The hard drive to be installed, a SATA power cable, SATA data cable, twist ties or Velcro ties, a screwdriver, and optionally, a grounding bracelet. Now that we have our basics together, let's get started. We first need to power down the computer. Turn off the power supply switch and unplug the power cable from the power supply. Unplug any remaining cables from the computer. Move the computer to a clean and sturdy work area. Start by removing the panel. You may have to remove one or both panels depending on your case. I'm going to remove both of mine. Most computer cases have removable panels like this. Remove the thumb screws from the rear and slide the panel back and tilt away. It's also a good idea to use a container to hold any loose hardware. I have a Cooler Master Stormtrooper case and it has a handy little tray that I can keep my extra screws in. I have an unboxing and a tour video for this case. I'll post a link in the video. I'm just removing a few front covers so I can comfortably remove the drive cage. This step isn't necessary for me, but it will make it easier to show you how to install the drive. The cage is held in by a thumb screw on each side. I'll need to remove those so I can slide the cage out. I also need to disconnect any cables attached to the fan. I can now push the loose cables through the case and slide out the drive cage. I'll be installing a Seagate 3 terabyte internal drive. It's a bare drive I got from Amazon.com. I've done an unboxing video and I'll post a link for that as well. These are the two connections we'll need to make. The left one, the larger one, is for the SATA power cable. The right one is for the SATA data cable. These are the screw holes used to secure the drive. There's three on each side. There's also screw holes in the bottom for an alternate way of mounting. If mounting directly to the cage, we'll need to use the short screws, but we'll be using a drive tray. Take a flat headed screwdriver or another hard object and press on the pins just to pop them out a little. Then tilt the drive into the tray, align the pins to the holes, and push the pins in. You may need to use the hard object to press them all the way in. Now the drive can be slid into the cage. Push the drive in until you hear it click. Note that every step thus far could have been done without removing the drive cage. Again, I only removed the cage for clarity in the video. We'll use some slightly longer screws to secure the drive to the cage. Using one screw for each side, place a screw into the middle hole of the cage which aligns with the middle hole of the drive, then tighten. The drive is now secure. The screws are an optional step that could have been left out, but by adding them, it reduces vibration. The cage can now be slid back into the case. Push the fan cables back through the case, then reattach them to the original connections. Locate and free any set of power cable that you may want to use, or you can install a new one. Push the power cable through the case and attach to the new drive. Pull any slack through the case wall so it will remain hidden. Attach the SATA data cable. Then push the cable through the back of the case so it can be routed to the motherboard. The SATA cable is pushed through an opening above so that it is close to the SATA connections on the motherboard. Attach the cable to a SATA port on the motherboard. Reinstall the thumb screws for the drive cage. I saved this step for last just in case we need to remove the cage again. Make sure to remove any excess slack. It can also be tied to the back of the case and remain out of sight. Tie any loose cabling to the back of the case using twist ties or Velcro straps. The case can now be reassembled.
When reattaching the side panel, it's not necessary to slide all the way from the back. The panel has a notch that aligns with a hole in the case. Fix the panel over the holes and then slide to the front. You can now replace the thumb screws. Place the computer back into position and then reattach any cables. Make sure to reattach the power cable and turn the power supply switch on. In the next video, we'll get the drive set up for Windows. Click the link in the video and I'll see you there. God bless.